Good morning. This morning I'm going to have a look at the COS 2614 October November 2015 exam paper. QT is quite a nice um, IDE. I really enjoy it. Um, UNISA makes it a little bit difficult to learn but um, they are trying to teach us some interesting stuff and I'm thankful for them introducing me to this uh, IDE um, so let me get started first of all if you have a look here um, on the left is the question paper on the right is my answer okay they've said here yeah, consider the following UML class diagram and the contents of the file main CPP to answer the questions that follow them so in our module well, we've got a module class you can see here's my module class it's got a header and it's got its own implementation file and then I've got my main CPP file so it says if I have a look um, there's some private variables um, or yeah, private private members uh, called mcode qstring so when I go and have a look at my header this is how I've defined my header and I've called it the class module um, I've made these uh, function calls public because I, I believe that's what the plus sign represents and these members are private so that's what I've uh, done over here is I've made them private um, okay so what you can see is this is a is, is a variable called m code of type q string and the next one is m name of data type q string and if you remember while learning this module anything with a get or a, um, just a two string is a constant you don't need to modify that information so but I know that it's uh, sometimes not too important for the exam but it's just interesting to note how they teach us these methods okay so this is my my header for this um, class and when I go to the implementation file this is my implementation file for this class um, I'll expand it so you can see the full implementation um, obviously what I've done is I've declared the uh, constructor the default constructor which says it passes two variables to the constructor and these are returning the variables this is the recommended way um, how Eunice has been teaching us about using uh, using these um, uh, constructors default constructors then here is my two string conversion okay and here's my uh, get nqf function um, all right so I'm not going to go into details of explaining what I've done I'm just uh, I haven't even tested it but I'm sure it it should work um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the main file and have a look here as you can see they've added they've shown us what their main what our main should look like and if you have a look here this is exactly what my main looks like except with this line written as one whole line instead of being on two lines um, so what they've got here is they've said include Q application include Q input dialog and include Q message box okay um, over here it's also said include the module H which is the header file for our module which I've done and then uh, here we using the Q string list and we um, splitting up the we've got a function called get module info and inside that we're splitting up the the module code and the um, the name the code name of the module um, yeah so module code and module name and then uh, inside the main function I've added this little bit here get module info just so that when we execute it you can see that it actually runs so the first uh, 
thing starts here. The class module represents a module which stores the module code and module name in its data members. The to string returns a string representation of the data members of an instance of module. Okay. The get nqf level returns the nqf level of a module given its module code. The nqf level of a module is represented by the fifth character of the module code. Assume that the module is implemented correctly and added to a Qt project which also has the above main CPP file, which this one does. Explain in detail what the function get module info does. So that's why I've added this option get module info over here. Okay, so that we can actually see what it's doing. So I'm going to execute this code and we'll have a look and we'll see We'll, we'll talk through it as we seeing it on the display. You'll see it comes up with this little box over here, module details. And it says here, enter module code and module name. Code and name separated by a comma. So basically what it's done is it's created a queue string uh, variable uh, named user input. And it's of the data type queue string. Then it's running a queue input dialog box, which is this box over here. You can see we use zero to represent uh, this. Um, it's like a, a way of saying I need um, I need the default window to open. Okay, so that's what this zero means. It's like creating an instance of this form. Then here you can see module details, which is appears on the title of your our queue input box. And then if we scroll across here, you can see enter module code and module name, code and name separated by comma. So that's the part that's, so it's basically creating a queue label on our form. Um, and that's where, what is showing here. So now we can enter, we can enter our, um, module code and module name so for this one i'm going to enter cos2614 as my module code and my module name uh, i'm going to just call it uh, learning qt okay learning qt okay now when i click on ok you're not going to see any further results because it's going to exit. But what it's going to do now is it's going to load this these two uh, data information into a queue string list called mod info, okay? And it's going to use the user inputs dot split with a comma because we've specified that it can be the split by a comma, and it will then create a list of uh, two. Um, variables and the one will contain the module code and the other one will contain the module uh, name and we could have had the the output displayed over here um, which would have split the lines because of the queue list but uh, for this demonstration I just wanted to show what get module info actually does um, so I'm um, uh, sorry that I'm not showing you the return of this mod info, but I'm sure that you would uh, be able to get it to display on two separate lines. Okay, so thank you for watching this video. I hope that this has helped you with question 1.1 of the exam paper where it says explain in detail what the function get module info does. So in summary, the get module info is responsible for getting the module um, details from the user using a queue input dialog, uh, which is displayed to the user. And then the queue string list uh, is splits the function uh, or splits the string into two and is and returns that mod info um, queue string list top to the to the calling um, function okay um, yeah 
that's basically what I what I would have written for those three marks. I trust that this video has been helpful, and I hope that you uh, have best of luck with your exams. Thank you for watching.